thing on our agenda is to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now you all do it individually? <laughs> okay. Um, our first project tonight is uh, HARB 2015-04. It's 413 Chestnut Lane, demolition of single story addition and wood deck on rear of home and the construction of a new two story addition and wood deck in that same rear of the home. Uh, please, whoever is going to present, come up, introduce yourself. We have um, handheld microphones, which are easier if you're pointing at plans. This one works too. Yeah, that works too. Um, why don't you take both? Yeah, handhelds. Um, we like to look at site plans and photographs and exterior elevations, and we really don't need to have any floor plans. So if you get to that point, just put them aside. We've looked at them, but we don't put them on camera. That's kind of how we do things. So, okay. so introduce yourself and take it away. Okay. My name is James Cassidy. I'm a registered architect in Philadelphia. I'm principal of C2 Architecture. And we're the architects on the project. Um, do you want me to start from the beginning? Like, what, how, how much have you reviewed and how much do you want to hear? Well, we've reviewed everything, um, okay. but for the public, they've seen nothing. Okay. So I, I would start with the site plan and then we can go okay. to photographs and then you can get into your exterior elevations. Okay. Um, on the cover sheet here, um, photographs number one through four are of the existing home. Uh, photograph one is the front elevation. Uh, photograph two is, is the southeast side elevation. Three is the rear elevation and four is the northwest side elevation. If you look at um, image three, this object right here is a one story, I guess you could even say one and a half story because of the roof addition to the original home. Um, this portion of the building is to be removed and replaced. The, if you look at the site plan here, you can see the area of new work here in the back and um, there's also a, an addition on the side facing the garage here, a one story. It's essentially um, a bump out to accommodate uh, the new kitchen. Give it a little bit more square footage. So, that's, so the piece that's currently there. This one, yeah. Is going to be removed and incorporated into this two story piece. So the footprint is this hashed area plus that little Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 The the width of the addition will change, okay. and I'm gonna go here. So you said you didn't want to talk about the plan, no. so we'll we'll move on from there, and we'll go. Um, the other, actually, the other thing I'm that's actually really really helpful is to take the photograph um, sheet and set it side by side to the gotcha. pr proposed, just so we can see. The, the existing and proposed. You have the quick release methods. We don't. I know we only have one viewer here, so it might help to actually look at the sheets because you're not really getting uh, a great image. Um, but using this, this here's that back one story addition we were talking about earlier. And this is the um, two story addition that is going back. This width is approxi approximately the width 
of the existing one-story addition. And what we were trying to do is incorporate and blend the addition into the existing roof lines. So by um, pulling and extending this, this roof line here to the back and um, matching the roof line of this side, it, it feels as if it was, uh, could fit with the original design. So we're trying to match it. And if you, if you look at the um, front elevation, it has a similar asymmetrical feel with also these um, stone columns that we're also picking up on in the back. So there's definitely um, a nod to the front elevation in the design of the uh, rear. The, um, the image here on the east elevation, uh, let me see. Um, well, you can't really see it here as much, but you're, you're seeing the extent of the, um, the projection from the existing house of the new addition. I believe it's roughly 13 feet off off of uh, from this face, the original house face. It's the same as before. Right? Yeah, the same as before. We're not extending um, further into the rear yard than the face of of the um, existing addition. Can I get that other? So again, the front elevation or south elevation is unchanged. Um, I think that it's going to be very hard to even see any of the new work from the street. You know, it's, and if you do, you won't notice it because it blends in. The one um, area on the west elevation, which, oh, I'm sorry. Um, on this elevation down here, there are a couple, um, it's hard to see in that image, but because we're, we're pitching the roof back to the side, um, as opposed to away from the house, like the original edition did, we're able to wrap that roof down back to the dining room dormer. And what that does is that gives the, um, the original footprint of the home is jogged so that the kitchen has an awkward relationship to uh, the dining room and the rest of the house because it was cut off from the rest of the house. And in this plan, we're trying to open the kitchen up to the rest of the house that a lot of the way people live now. Um, and by, by pulling this out that three feet, it, um, it, it greatly increases the, the functionality of the kitchen. So, and it's blended in to that new roof of the rear so that the roof line still stays um, matching the, the rest of the house. Now you're not, on the um, west elevation, you're not changing the asymmetrical roof line of the piece above the bay? The, what, what happens is if you look at the existing image on number four, we're keeping it, but the way the, um, that rear addition is, it actually, it joins the original house at um, the bottom of that, that, uh, that bay, that recessed piece, uh, where, where window J is, if you see that. Mm -hmm. So that, because that's being removed, and the roof, the, the new roof isn't going to be pitching, the existing addition pitches away from the house so that you read the roof from the rear elevation. But what we're doing is we're, we're pitching it to the side yards so that you read the elevation. And then when that roof pulls down to the west, it, it reveals probably what that, um, what that bay used to be like. It frees it from the addition. If, if you, like so I'm talking about this location right here. 
Is that gable going to be removed and then rebuilt like you, or is it yes. going to be? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, because there's, there's a, um, it, the existing, it, it just, it's continuous. So it's continuous with the rear addition. So once that rear addition is gone, that this edge here has to be rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah. Just that edge? Or the whole, the whole gable? Well, I mean, I think a lot of it's going to depend on when we open it up. Okay. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, taking it back to the ridge, I don't think that's going to be necessary. But okay. Well, just in your drawing, it just shows, I understand, you know, it looks like you're keeping it and you have to monkey with that edge because it's, it's we do. gobbled up with the, the shed roof line. Yeah. And then the piece that's over the bay window has an asymmetrical roof line existing, but it doesn't in the new. And I, don't, I just was wondering if that was, you know, an oversight or you were changing that. Um, when you say asymmetrical roof line, you're talking about the um, the kind of trapezoidal roof on the on the first bay, the dining room bay. The the second floor of the dining room bay is, has an asymmetrical roof. And the the front. Oh. Gutter line is low, is higher. Yeah, than, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So is that is that going to remain? Yeah, that's going to remain. That's okay. that's a that's, yes, that doesn't that does not get a, changed. A that's a little bit of a that's 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 an oversight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, and then if you could go back to the rear elevation, the proposed, uh -huh. and put that next to the. Existing again. Did, did you guys look at, um, I mean, it's kind of got a, a New England salt, salt box detail, even though it's, uh, you know, coming into, it's, I know what you're doing. You're relating to the asymmetrical roof lines that are existing. But all the, all the asymmetrical roof lines that are on the first floor have a, either have a curve to them, or in some cases they have a break. Maybe not in this house, but in similar houses. And I was wondering if you get if you looked at maybe breaking that roof, that long roof at the dormer and raising it just a little bit to mimic that. I mean just a kink. Yeah. And then then you would actually get ceiling height at that wall line that you don't have. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and then it breaks because that's an enormous piece of roof right there. So it's, it's essentially like the front elevation how it comes down and then right at the bottom where it kind of meets the porch, it yeah. kind of kicks up a degree. Yeah and, and, yeah, and I think the porch is probably a sloped, you know, it's not, a, it's not an angled, you know, definition between the, the main roof and, you know, I think it kind of is a curve. Tapers, yeah. But in, in some of these, they, they do it, you know, they, there's an actual angle in there and right. whatever is easier. But I think that would probably bring it more into keeping with some yeah. of the things going on here. Yeah, I mean that's, that's yeah. it's actually a really easy move to make because that that hinge would happen pretty much where the bay meets it, right. and then it would just follow back to that dining room bay. It's that's a very simple. Okay. Um, that's a simple move to make, and it's a it's a pretty good suggestion. Uh, you know, otherwise, you know, it looks like I think the third floor is the only one that has the kind of the staggered shingle detail. The rest of it's all just laid up right. straight. So you're going to keep all, all the layup straight because you're just two floors yeah. here. Yeah. Um, in terms of massing, uh, the footprint, you know, I don't think it's, you know, anything too, um, too large for this. This is a big house to begin with, yeah. and I don't think it's got, it's not overwhelming what's there now. And the footprint is only, you know, slightly larger than, um, What's there, and, and you know, part of its porch on the first floor. So there's a negative, exactly, you know, positive negative going on. Right. It's not a true volume that we're carving away at. I mean, they, these additions on the rear of these houses used to be, 
you know, kitchens and mud rooms and uh, utility rooms, and then people have repurposed them and expanded them and whatever over the years. And it's very common to have this really elongated long roof on these on this particular house and on houses like that in the North Wayne area. Wow. So now you've turned the gable the other way and. I think you, from the utility standpoint, it gets what you want from this, from the interior, yeah. whereas a shed wouldn't do that. Right. And a shed that big across the back of the house would be, yeah, you know, kind of grotesque. Right. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be in keeping to have that kind of a detail on something this large. Right. So I think the only comment I have is, you know, all the detailing matches. Um, I don't, I can't really tell what you have in the window world. You know, it's kind of a mix of stained glass and six over ones or nine over or something, you know, and you know, you've got, it looks like one over ones, are you gonna get into detailing them equally as well or pick one and go with it or? Yeah, we, ha we haven't really gone into it and you can see that the house has a lot of, um, you know, some of them have mullions, some of them don't. It, it's kind of a hodgepodge right now. And I think what we were trying to do, at least at this stage, is work within the massing so that the openings that we have presented are uh, consistent with the rest of the house. Uh, I mean, there's, those are, there's, the, there's a double window that exists already. Oh, there's a triple, but it's a bay. Right. Uh, but that's kind of, again, on the back side, underneath the porch. Yeah, the, the, that's going to be, it's not very visible, the triple under the under the overhang there. Well, you know, I like the, um, you know, the, the effort going through to do a stone column in the rear as well. It's, normally that's all, all for show on the front and then everything else in the back just sort of yeah. is whatever. Well, the back, I mean, this is a great backyard. Yeah. I mean, it has great old growth trees. It's where they hang out. Yeah. And so, so now so the I'm front's the back. I'm saying that's a positive. I, like, yeah. you know, I think that's good to, to move that way. Um, does this have, uh, There's no rafter tails or anything on, on the gable ends. They're pretty flush, right? Yeah. There's no there's not a lot of detail on those. So I think they might be I think there might be like a little forty five at the just at the end of the tail. Okay. But no no real detail. Okay. And no show rafters pushing out the gables and No. And I guess the only other comment is the the rest of the house has these turn ridge lines. That yeah. Turn up. Might be kind of fun to do that again. <laughs> well, we actually did. I mean, we, we did the garage that you can see on image one, mm -hmm. and we actually did those. Um, I mean, Josh, the owner, was pretty insistent about matching those, and I'm I'm sure he will be again. I would I would put put that into the the mix because okay. you know it's it's a pretty significant gable that you're creating now. Yeah, sure. And you know that's. The, the, you know, there are two main gables kind of now that, that are on the front that are doing that, and that sort of finishes everything on the mm -hmm. rear. So. Those are really all my comments. I don't know if you guys have anything. I, um, I, I think it's a nice uh, addition, really, because it's on the back of the house, and the, uh, I, I really like the way you've, you've incorporated the massing and the stone and the, the materials. I assume that the, the materials will be matching the rest of the house in terms yeah. of, yeah. And um, in terms of the windows, I, I mean, that doesn't, I, I think, you know, whatever you put in there, there's, it's such a hodgepodge that, yeah. as, you know, as long as it's a multi-pane window, it seems to me it would It'd be fine. It would be okay. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with, with um, Cam regarding that roof, you know, breaking up the, the salt mm -hmm. box roof. But I have to say that I wouldn't make that. I, I think it would be much nicer, but since it's at the back of the house, it doesn't bother me really the way it is. But if you, if you followed his advice, I think it would make it a nicer mm -hmm. detail. But I, I, I think it's a nice addition. I think the massing is, is really good. It looks like a good project. Thanks. We hope so. <laughs> right now, we're not reviewing hot tubs or decks. So <laughs> that was on the plan. I can't. I, I can't present can anything see. about a hot tub. <laughs> it's not my area of expertise, but I think these. The, I just wanted to say that these houses are so wonderful. I mean, it's great that 
that uh, you know people are coming like you guys are coming and restoring them and so that they can be lived in today because they really are beautiful houses. Mm. Yeah. Have you have you uh, gone to the historical society to look up any information on this? I have not. It'd probably be a good idea. Just I mean you, you know you've you've got your plan, but some of the detailing you know sure. you, it's a it's called a Flemish house. Okay. And it was you know built in eighteen. 95 or something um, and there's a, there's a half a dozen of them around and they're right. all in you know either flip plans or all you know right. um, so you, you can either go walk it and look at them or you can go to the historical society and they will have the original plan hmm. um, that you can kind of look at and just they'll have the original plan of this house yeah so I mean they've got all of these these houses sounds so. like a no brainer so it, it's just if yeah. if you don't use it in this it's just an it's an informational thing that you know a tool well we can check our as builds yeah. from it yeah 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 the, the other thing too that they have which is we have uh, they have a program at a historic plot program so that once you finish it you, you could probably apply for it now even because it's basically based on the facades of the house that are visible but you can get a bronze plaque mm. for your house which will have you know the the date if they know it the date the house was built who built it the builder the architect and it's just a nice. Um, Ooh, that's 1885. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a nice um, educational tool, and it just looks really great on the house. So I yeah. really encourage you to go and um, get one of these plaques. They generally take about three months to get, but since there's so much research at the historical society now, that shouldn't be a problem. Right. And they'll have photographs of the street, and they'll probably have that house from. 1905 or something. You know, it's just amazing. Yeah, they have these. I had photos, I had photos from when it was about a year old and five years old. Perfect. Kids oh, that's on, great. Kids on the steps in the front. <laughs> really cool. I mean, that's. But you know, they have. They've got all that stuff. So it's just a great resource. So, yeah. um, I don't know how you feel about making those conditions, or do we just want to say as per plan, and then those are just suggestions. It's up to you guys. How, how you feel about that? No, I'm. I'm fine with it and I live in an 1895 house so I, what I was wondering when I saw the first picture was whether the addition that's being torn down was part of the original house it appears ours had an addition that was a mudroom uh -huh. and um, I wondered if that house was a later addition or whether they fitted the original plan yeah I'm not sure I don't I don't think so because of the way the openings well, and the way, the way it's kind of built. Comes down appears to be so yeah, but I don't know so if it's even. been renovated no. to kind of be what it is now. So it's it's hard to tell. I, I think to go back to Cam's question about conditions, I think because of the massing, I, I mean, I, I think they're great suggestions, but I would feel more comfortable just making them as suggestions rather than as conditions. Okay. I mean, you know, it's typically on the rear of a house. That, you know, we don't have. If it if it were visible, it would be. But I think you know you're you're living there. You're in the rear of the house. I think you're going to want to. They're they're do this. pretty. That's, so that's I, up to you. I think some of them are things we were going to do anyway, and some right. of them are things to think about. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, you know I, you know you want to go in and see how it works with the plan and the space, but I think the, the roof flip is generally a pretty good idea. Okay. So. All right. Well, then you want to make a motion. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to grant a certificate of occupancy. Appropriateness. Appropriateness. We don't do <laughs> occupancy here. But he does live there. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. I'm on the wrong committee here. Um, <laughs> based on the uh, plans and elevations that you've submitted today. As per plan. As per plan, yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Three. Done. So you. that's, we're a, um, an advisory board, mm -hmm. which... Um, the Board of Commissioners will take our recommendations at their next meeting and decide whether they agree with us or not. So technically, you're not approved until they approve you. I understand. I'm not sure when that meeting is. Are we in for that? Okay. So that's quick. Um, if you have all other things, zoning and whatnot taken care of, then that would probably be your last hurdle for, from here. This is our first hurdle. Okay. We did this first. All right. It looked like you were within all the setbacks, but you might have... You know, it's not it's not an enormous right. piece of work. So, um, but anyhow, it's from our standpoint. Monday, you'll get the official. They give you a letter, and then you know, official.
officially been approved right. from, for us. But it's a great project, and you know, we look forward to seeing trucks out front. <laughs> well, many thanks. Okay, thank you, for, thank you for your presentation. All right, any new business from anybody? Thank you. Uh, how about any public participation? Okay. Um, I don't have any old business either. Um, so I guess we're going to adjourn. I move to adjourn. All in favor? Okay, we're adjourned.